Hey campers, this is Dr. White here. We're going to be going over this uh, worksheet. This is a review worksheet on how to write down empirical formulas of compounds. Okay, here we go. All right, so when we put sodium cation and bromide together, okay, um, the charge in sodium is plus one, bromide is minus one. We can write that as NaBr, okay? Um, and you always double check. Sodium's got a positive one charge, bromide's got a negative one charge, the ratio will be one to one to make a neutral compound. So one sodium, one bromide makes sodium bromide Remember to include that IDE at the end. Next up we've got copper and sulfate. Okay, so what we're going to do is figure out how many coppers we need to offset the minus two charge of the sulfate. We're going to need two of them, right, because copper's got a positive one charge, sulfate's got minus two. So we would write that as Cu2SO4, and the name is going to be copper. One, remember we've got to put the one there because it is a transition metal. Sulfate, you can look this up in your table of polyatomic ions. And then so on it goes. Lead, two plus, chloride minus one. That means we're going to need two chlorides for every one lead. We would write that as PbCl2. Lead, remember lead is a transition metal, so we've got to put in the charge here. And then chloride, remember it's got to have that IDE, an IDE ending. K plus, S2 minus, we're going to need 2K plus per 1 S2 minus to offset the charge. So it's going to be K2S, we would call this potassium. sulfide. Remember we don't need the Roman numeral because potassium has a set charge of plus one. It's in that first group. It's an alkali metal. Okay. Uh, SN2 plus, tin 2 plus, and F minus. We're going to need two Fs per one. Tin, SN, F2. That's going to be tin. Remember tin is a transition metal. 2 fluoride, that's a UO, I believe. Okay, now we've kind of got to tease out what the ions are from the formula, okay? We got barium, we've got iodide. Well, I know that iodide is minus 1, okay? It's in group 7 or group 17, depending on how you look at it. It's a halogen. Halogens always have a negative one charge when they're in a compound. Barium, we can figure out the charge in barium with the, without even looking it up. If there's two negative iodides, then barium must be two plus. So we've got two iodides and one barium. We're going to call this thing barium iodide. Okay, we got one aluminum. Now, aluminum has a charge of three plus because it's in that uh, group three of your uh, uh, main block elements. And chloride, we've got three of them. Chloride is always minus one because it is a halogen. We're going to call this aluminum. Chloride. Again, it does not need a Roman, num Roman numeral because the charge of 3 plus for the aluminum is set. That will never change. Oh, looks like we've got uh, some polyatomics here. We've got magnesium and nitrate. Well, you know magnesium is plus 2 if you look it up in the periodic table. Nitrate, on the other hand, if you look that up in your table for polyatomics, 
is a minus one. Two nitrates per magnesium. This is going to be called magnesium nitrate. Next up, we've got this really complicated looking thing. This is potassium and C2H3O2. Okay, that looks like an acetate to me. Okay, I don't know too much about the acetate, but I do know the potassium is plus one. It's always plus one, it's an alkali metal. C2H3O2, that is a big polyatomic. You can look it up in the table. And that's got a minus one charge. So K plus C2H3O2 minus, okay, one to one uh, charge relationship, okay, we're going to go with potassium acetates. Okay, it looks like we got a complicated looking one here. If you look these up in your your polyatomics, NH4, that is one chunk there. And that is a positive one charge. There's two of them. SO3, on the other hand, well, there's only one of them, so it would have to have a minus two charge. That's called sulfite. This would be ammonium sulfite. Okay, oh, now we've got to go from the name and get the empirical formula. Silver oxide. All right, well, remember that silver. You should be able to look that up in the periodic table, AG. Silver's always got a positive one charge. Always, always, always positive one. Oxide, on the other hand, group six, that's going to have a negative two charge. So what do I need to do to match these up? I need two silvers. So my empirical formula is going to be AG2O. Okay? We've got iron three sulfide. Okay? Well, that's easy. If it tells me what my charge is on my transition metal, I know that it's iron 3 plus. Sulfide, on the other hand, that's group 6 just like oxygen. That's S2 minus. Now, if I'm going to have a balanced neutral compound, I need to make sure that my charges add up. I need to find the common multiplier with them. If I have two irons at 3 plus and three sulfides, I'm going to have a neutral charge. It's going to be minus 6 over here, plus 6 over here. F E 2 S 3. Copper 2 nitrate. Well, that's easy. Copper 2 plus. I know nitrate is NO3. I can look that up. That's NO3 minus. I'm going to need two of these to offset that 2 plus for the copper. C U parentheses. Remember, you need those parentheses. So you don't get confused with like writing stuff down like NO32. Nobody really knows what that means. So you need those parentheses. Magnesium chloride. Mg. Mg is a not a transition metal. It is an alkaline earth metal. It's always two plus. Chloride minus one. You're going to need two of these to match up with the magnesium. MgCl2. Calcium carbonate. Calcium again, alkaline earth metal, Ca2 plus, carbonate, look that up, CO3, 2 minus, we got the same ratio, minus 2 plus 2, that will give you a neutral compound, I just need one of each of those parts. Just finishing up here, Mg2 plus and NO2 minus, okay, we're going to need two of these per one of these, MgNO2 2, we're looking at magnesium nitrite. Right. It's nitrate's cousin nitrite. Cu2 plus OH2 minus. Let's get 2 uh, OH minus. Okay, CuOH2. Copper, remember, because it's a transition metal, it needs to be copper 2, if you look that up, that's hydroxide, hydroxide, 
hydroxide, OH minus hydroxide. All right, we've got K2CRO4. Well, K is always plus. CRO4 is minus 2. We've got two Ks. And we can write this down as potassium chromate. You can look that up in your uh, polyatomics. Okay, here's the key. Hope this helps. Thanks a lot.